קקדוש בוקר אור מסכת במציע דף ע"ח עמוד א' 78a1 two dots the gemara says פשיטה it was obvious באה לזבונה במאה ולא אשכח a uh, person needs a hundred dinarim. So he wants to sell his small field, right? Which is a uh, hundred dinarim. And he doesn't find anybody to buy it. And therefore, he sold another field for 200 zoos, for 200 dinarim, right? Because only that they'll buy. But he didn't pay him the entire 200 uh, dinarim. So he's coming back and forth for the money. Lokani, the guy does not buy, does not purchase the field. Meaning, Right? So here it says that since he's still coming back and forth looking for the money, meaning the guy didn't put the 100, the full 200. He only gave, let's say, 100. Right? You know how it is. Some people, they, they say something and they don't actually do it. Right? So that means they don't actually do the full amount. So therefore, he paid a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little, but nothing. Uh... So he didn't acquire it. Ela Baradim. He bailed the Buddha be mea velo ashkaf. He wanted to sell it at the beginning for 100 and he didn't find it. But if he was Toreach, you said he would have found. He himself just didn't do it. Then he sold the other field for 200. What's going to be the halacha? Do you say that it's like he sold his field? Yeah, and therefore it's for his money. Oh Lord, do we say no? Because technically all he had to do was just work a little bit harder and he just didn't uh, do it. You know, some people, they're lazy, right? And because of their laziness, uh, but if Bemet, he would have actually, he would have found for the hundred. Remember, he only needed a hundred. So what's the answer? Take, we don't have an answer. We're not sure if he would have been working a little bit harder and he would have actually gotten it, would that have helped out and therefore it's considered that the guy buys it or not? We don't have an answer. The person comes and he gets a hamar or kadar to do melacha for him. Yeah, and what happened was they stopped in the middle of the day. So we already said, get other workers or you trick them into it. You remember we spoke about it. That basically what happened was you went and you got workers and in the middle of the day, they stopped working for you. Now, if you're not going to finish it up, you're going to lose out money. So what are you allowed to do? Either you're allowed to get other workers, even if it costs more expensive, but then you take it off their account, right? Or what you do is you trick them. Tell them, oh, okay, fine. I'll pay you guys double. Just finish the job. And then afterwards, here's your money. Hey, you do Sorry. That's the way it is. Huh? He says, Matan, you're allowed to trick them in order to do because they did something wrong in the fact that they stopped you in the middle of the work. Yeah. And so when are you allowed to come and rent? How much? Amr of Nachman, of Nachman says, They're full salary. So imagine, I got cheap guys that they did half the job, 50% of the job. So let's say 50% was $500. But now what happens is, I have to get other guys to finish off the job. But there's no cheap guys anymore. So I could only get other guys that they're going to cost me much more money. So if the job was going to cost me 1000 even though these guys did 50% of the job, I don't have to pay them 50%. I have to pay them what's left over of the job. So if they are, the other group is going to cost me $700, they're only going to get 300 But now, until when, when do we go? Huh? Why 300, 250? It's 300 and 700. It's a thousand. One more time. It's a thousand dollar job. Yeah, it's a thousand dollar job. One more time. Thousand dollar job. 50% of the work is $500. What happened was, is that even though they did the 50% of the work, I had to get other workers. And the other workers were going to cost me 700 in total. Yeah. For the other 50%. So now I don't have to pay them 500 for the first 50%. I only have to pay them 300 for the first 50%. Because basically I have to pay them the difference of what it costs for the entire job. So the Gemara asks, until when can I go? Can I do even 800 and then I give them 200? Can it says the Gemara, Ad kedei sechanan. Until the entire amount. The Balabai could come and take the entire amount. And now if I'm going to have to pay to get the job done, and it's going to cost me a thousand. They get nothing. Nada. Why? It's their fault. They went and they stopped in the middle of the job. Yeah? So Rava comes and he asks Rav Nachman. 
had 45 zuz. When we just said that a balabai could come and get other workers, he could even get it for 40 or 50 zuz per day. This is obviously going to be much more than the regular well, but you could actually do that. Why? Listen, if you have to get it done, and if not, it's going to get ruined, do whatever you need to do. And if the other guys are going to lose out, it's their problem, not your problem. Okay? So Amalei, so says Rav Nachman to Rava, Kitanya Yi, when this writer came and it said this, Shabata Chavila Liado, when the Chavila came to his hands. Right? What does that mean? So therefore, it's going to be mutar for the Balabai to come take this Chavila to sell it and to get other poalim and everything. But in another case where you don't have this Chavila in the hand of the Balabai, he cannot come and make them lose at Kedekach. I mean, he can't make them lose that much money. Right? Obviously, and again, obviously we're talking about here that the guy, right, uh, you can't just come and start getting, okay, fine. I was getting the Sug Gimel Avuda, right? Avuda Ravit, and all of a sudden I'm going to come and I'm going to get the, the, the highest, uh, you know, like that. No, no, no. That you can't do. You have to get regular workers. The only thing is if you can't find and it's going to get ruined, so then you have this permission to do so. Okay? Mishnah. Hasokheret HaChamur. Leolicho Bahar. You come and you get a donkey in order to take it on the mountain. Yeah? Now, what happens is, you took it in the valley. Babika, you took, you got a chamor to take it in the valley. And you took it in the mountains. Even if it's going to be the same distance, right? Vameta and it dies, hayav. You're going to be hayav. Now, the reason why is because each one we're going to see in the... In the well, okay, we're going to see the Nishan, but also in the Gemara, each one has the pros and the cons. Meaning, at the end of the day, I don't care about the distance. I care also about the climate and the surroundings around it. And I said, when you're going on dirt roads and mountains, uh, you know, you need it's much more. Ah, uh, very good. 100%. So therefore, that's what we're saying. It doesn't, and it's also the air. It's many, many other factors as well. You understand? That's like right now, I'm going to come and I'm going to take your car, right? I'm going to take it on a dirt road. Iowa, who told you to take it on the road? Right, you were going on these mountains, and I don't know what. I, you know, like uh, meaning that you're going to ruin it much more. You understand? Know or you're going to take his Tesla, you're going to drive it through the Miami beach areas when it gets flooded, and you're taking it through all the water, and all of a sudden the motor stops. Why? It's electrical, a battery, and everything. Uh, water, a kaddish. You understand? Know so the same thing. Okay. Fine. The Tesla can go to the water. Huh? Okay. Yeah, you're going to get the chamor. So the same thing. You remember, you got the chamor to take it in the har. And then you took it to the bika, the valley, instead of taking it to the mountain. If it slips and it dies, right? Why? Because if you would have taken it, it would have slipped even more, right? Meaning, if it slipped in the valley, it's going to slip on the mountain. Because the mountain is much more to slip. When you're going uphill, what's easier to go? No, no, no. A valley is not down. A valley is not down. A valley is a, it's flat. It's like a plain. You understand? So if, if it slipped in a normal terrain, it would have slipped right on, a, on, a, on an incline. No, 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 no. Not, not down. Right? Down. Oh, yeah, yeah, down, but it's not hard. It's not uh, sharp. It's not a, you're not. It's not like a mountain. A mountain, uh, yeah, veuchama, right? Chayav. But what happens if it gets hot? Yeah. So then what happens? So it's going to be chayav. Yeah, lo licha babikar, lo licha bahar. If he's going to come take it in the bika and he took it in the mountain, imechelika. If right now it's a chelika. He's going to be Chayav. Yeah? So now if he took it in the valley, meaning he rented it to take it in the valley, and then he took it on the mountain, and then it slipped, obviously he's going to be Chayav. Why? Because it, it might not have slipped in the valley. And now you took it in the mountain, so you're going to be Chayav. In Muhammad, but if he got warmed up, he's going to be Patur. Because if he would have taken it according to the normal one, he would have gotten even hotter. In the mountain, there's much more air. So therefore, if it got hot and everything in the valley... Meaning, if he got hot on the on the mountain, Kalva Chomer would have gotten hot in the in the valley, and therefore he's going to be patu. But if it's going to be because of the aliyah that it died, right? So then no, then he's going to be chayav. 
So basically, the concept is is that according to the circumstances, right? That's what you're going to have to, you know, whether it's speaking to Yichayev or not. Yeah. et hamor vivrika. What happens now? You get the donkey, and it becomes blindish a little bit, a little bit, not completely blind, but uh, becomes a little bit blind. Yeah. Lo uh, okay. One minute. O shnasit angaria. Or it was taken by the king to work for the king for a little bit. Omelo yikatal manishil chalifanecha. I had to take it. Why? What did he do? He didn't do anything. Yeah, well, what did he, he didn't cause anything. Yeah, it's the guy's mazal. What do you want? Right? Meta onishbera, but if it dies or it breaks the leg, yeah, hayav lamid hamor. He has to come and he has to give him another hamor. Yeah, what does that mean? If right now it died or it broke or whatever it is, and therefore obviously the sochet, so now the bala hamor has to put him another hamor. Right? Everyone understood? It's like a car. You rent a car, the car dies, whatever the reason it is. So what happens? The rental company has to give you another car. Why? I'm renting a car. You have to give me another one. Until here, clear? That was a Mishnah. Yeah? No? Lama? Lama Nishimotu. Why is it that the first part of the Mishnah, we didn't differentiate between the reasons of death? And why is it that in the second part of the Mishnah, right, we did? You understand? Meaning, at the end of the day, what's the reason why? What's going on? So, Amri Dever Rabbi Anai, the Tamidei Yeshiva of Rabbi Anai came and they said, Reisha Shemeta Mechamat Avir. The Reisha, which means the first part of the Mishnah, we're talking about where it died because of the Avir. The Amina, as we say, Avira de Harkatla. You know, there's much less oxygen on the mountains. So, therefore, I'm going to say that it was probably the air that actually killed it. The Amina, we said, Avira de Bikatla. Or we're going to say, the Avira de Bikat, meaning it was only because of the Avir. It wasn't because of another reason. It wasn't because it slipped or because of this or that. Meaning, we know. So, what do I say? It's just Avir. And that's why in the Reisha, we didn't make... Meaning, if you go to the first part of Mishnah, what was written in the first part of Mishnah? Right? We didn't we didn't differentiate. Why? that? Why? Because it was Zavid. If it was Zavid, so that's why it's the Chayav. The next part, we went and we started saying about slipping, about whether it's going to be, uh, you know, overheating or whatever you want to call it. You know, like you've got the... So there we make a differentiation what happened. But in the Reisha, which is going to be David, we didn't make any. That's Pirush number one. Pirush number two. Rabbi Yosef Rachanina Amar. Rabbi Yosef Rachanina comes and he says, okay, go on for example. Shemeta mechamat uvtsena. We're talking about where the Hamor died because of a Yefut. Yeah, what does that mean? And that's why the Socher is going to be Chayav Becholofen. Yeah? He's always going to be Chayav. For example, if he goes, and he's going to rent it Bahar, right? Whatever it is. So therefore, right? When you come and you're going to, if it dies because of Ayifut, that's what you're always going to be Chayav. Right? Because at the end of the day, when you come and you take it on a mountain, obviously you could say that the taking it on the mountain obviously caused it much more tired. When you come and you take a bicycle and you put on the inclination as if that you're going up or you even take a, you know, the, the electrical, you go to the gym and you, so what do you do? You put on an incline and obviously it's going to, it's harder. You burn the calories quicker. You burn, yes, why? Because when you're going up a mountain, right? You get tired much more. Okay. The same halacha would apply if you're going to take it in the bika. Because even though he could say, right? It was not oto cham, Rabbi Miuchan, right? That it could actually get there. So therefore, in such a case of a yifut, right? So therefore, that's why we're going to come and we're going to say, that's why it died. So the first answer was, it died because of the avid. And in the avid, it doesn't matter. Why? Because the avid of the bikar, or the avid of the mountain could cause him to die. And it wasn't because you could say a kol shekin. You understand? Because of whether it's going to be slipping or because of getting overheated. The second answer is, a yifut. Obviously, if I take it to the bika, you're not going to tell me it's the same taking a regular bike over here, you know, like uh, down Bell Harbor and then up a hill. It's not the same thing. So it's a completely different uh, thing. And the same thing uh, the other way around. So he says, Rabbah comes and he says the third explanation. 
the Nachash came and a bit, the serpent came and a bit him and it killed him. And therefore, he's always going to be Chayav. Because if he went on the normal path, so therefore, listen, that's it. He's going to be patur. But you took him on another path. Maybe the Nachash was only in that path. So therefore, automatically, I could always blame the path that you took, even if it wasn't really bad, more work or extra work or less work. doesn't matter. Because I told you to go to the Har, the mountain. That's what I rented out for you. The Nachash came and he bit you. Okay, so I'm patur. But if you took it to the valley, maybe that's why the Nachash bit you. But if, if I gave it to you to the right, in, the other way around, then it's not meaning that if you went on the proper path, I can't say anything. Because you went on the proper path and it died to a Nachash. Hamani, who are we living with? What did he The Amar, as he says, "Kol ma'avir adat shel balabait." Anybody that's going to come and use it adat against data of balabait, yeah, nikra gazlan. Ein cheta mubet. He's called a gazlan. Seventy-eight B. Everyone has it. So basically, the fact that you came and you used it not in the path of the balabait, you're going to be considered a gazlan. Yeah, I come and I lend you. I come and I lend you a book. Yeah, a sefer. I lent it to you. You come and you're using it here. No problem. You come and you take it to uh, a nursery, right? Yeah, you take it home, you take it to the nursery. You come, you're the, and all of a sudden spills the coffee, spills the this, spills the that, spills everything. So what happens? Yeah. I love it. Gazlan. Gazlan. So you're going to be chayav. Yeah, yeah, that's what he says. Gazlan. Shitat Rabimin. Shitat Rabimin is the second that you come and you change from the status quo of what the owner, right, lent it to you for, you're called a gazlan. And therefore, you're going to be chayav. Okay, says the Gemara. Hi, Rabbi Meir. Which Rabbi Meir? Ile Mar Rabbi Meir. The Tzaba. If you're going to tell me it's a Rabbi Meir of the Tzaba, we're going to see the Tanamas. We learned in the Mishnah. Hanoten semel the Tzaba litzwa lo adom utzwa lo shachot. Imagine, I give you my wool, and I tell you paint my wool to dye my wool. So I tell you what color? Red. Shachot. Like Iowa, I wanted the uh, red for tapestry for. Now you're coming, you give me uh, black, right? Black and red, whatever. The bimino man, no ten, no demits. All you have to give, he has to actually pay him the demits semed. Meaning he has to actually come and give him the money of semed, which is not the tzavua. Rabbi Yudah, man, Rabbi Yudah says, no, no, no. Imashevach yeter ala yitzia. If the appreciation now, because you painted it, is more than the actual yitzia, than the tzviat semed. You give him the yitzia, which is basically the hotzaot, the costs of painting. But if the yitzia is more than the shevach, all you have to do is give him the appreciation. Meaning, according to Rabbi Meir, the tzaba is considered a gazlan because you changed it. So for you have to pay him for the for the temen, right? And therefore, the same thing by us. Obviously, according to Rabbi Yudai, it wasn't like that. It depends what 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 costs more money, the appreciation or not the appreciation. So says the Gemara, Mimai, huh? How do we know, right? That you want to bring a proof from here? Din Mashane Hatam, the kind of Shinui Maaseh. There, maybe you acquired it because of Shinui Maaseh. Meaning, when you come and you took this semen and then you painted it with the wrong color, maybe you acquired it with a change in the action Shinui Maaseh. Meaning, if I come and I lend you this semen. You used it here or you used it in a nursery. Did you change anything? You didn't change anything. There was an honest that happened, yes, but you didn't change. There's no shinima ase. Here, there was a shinima ase. I did an action to it. And that action that I did changes the entire essence. So if we don't bring a proof from the tzaba to our case, so it says, okay, fine. You're right. It's a bimid of purim. What's the bimid of purim? What's the bimid Right? So let's see what happens. So he says, So he says like this. The time is we learned to the right, Migbat Purim, money that they collected for tzedakah, for Sudat Purim, for the Anim. Le Purim, you have to use it for Purim. Migbat Ta'ir, Le Ta'ir. Obviously, that city, they use it for that city. The end Medaktikim Badavar. But now they're not going to be medatek to say that, to check the sudat, uh, you know, the the torah of the anim for sudat purim in order to come and give it to the other things of the tzedakah of the city. 
Avalochim et agalim, but rather they're going to take the money, they're going to purchase calves, the shochtin, they're going to slaughter them, they're going to eat them, they're going to eat them, the mutadi polikit, and the rest, the less leftover goes to the kids of tzedakah. The Beliezer and Rebbe said, "Mila purim le purim, you could only use it for purim. The en ani rashay lakach mena ritzual, he can't use it for anything else." Meaning, if this money was supposed to be for Purim, he cannot use it for shoelaces or something that he needed for shoes. Unless they made a condition with Mahmad and Shayid. These are the words of Rabbi Yaakov and the name of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Shimon Gabriel Mekel. Rabbi Shimon Gabriel is Mekel, which means like this. According to Shittat Rabbi Meir, imagine right now we're collecting money, Matanot Levionim. And Matanot Levionim is going to be used for Suda Purim. So you could only use it for Suda Purim. If now there's leftovers, and let's say we don't need that much. And now we want to change it. We have to change the ma'amad and she'ha'id, which means mamash. We have to. You understand why? Because you can't just change it however you want. So he comes and he says, right? What's very very important to understand though is, you have to actually come and you, according to the shbad, you you could be mekel. You could change it. You don't need the money for suda purim. Use it for something else, right? For the anim. But according to the bimidi, you need. That means you want to change from the dal to the. You have to. You have to make sure that you know. You can't just do whatever you want with it. So answers the Gemara, Dilma Hatam Nami, there also, the Adaita the Purim, he gave it for the Data the Purim. Adaita the Purim, but he didn't give it for anything else. Meaning, since he gave it with Havana for Purim and he didn't give it for any other reason, so for that's why he has to do it. Right? So that means you can't come. It's not like our case where you came and you just, maybe it's not Makpid. What? You took it on this road and you took it on the other road. Maybe the guy was a Makpid. Here, the guy's giving you for Purim. He wants you to use it for Purim. But rather, this, this Rabbi Meir, the time we learned in the Brayta, the Mishum Lo Lazar, or the Mishum Rabbi Meir, Mishum Lo Lazar says the name of Rabbi Meir. Hanoten dina laanin likach lo chaluk. Imagine right now you give him money to buy a chaluk. Lo yikach lo talit. Don't buy a talit. Talit. Why? Mina shemavira dato shabal bait. Meaning sometimes. By the way, this was actually very very interesting. I remember we used to get in Kolel. We would always get something which is called manak la chagim. Manak la chagim is basically presents. For the Chagim, yeah, that's a Bade, it's in other places as well. So it depends where they are, right? Many times people would come and they would give each time. So for example, I know in Mexico. So the way they do it in Mexico, very, very smart. You have one Balabait, right? That he's into shoes. I Meaning that's what he has. He's got tons of shoes, thousands, and he sells shoes. So every, let's say, every Pesach, right? They ca he comes, everybody in the family, they get a free pair of shoes. So they come to the store, they come, ta, 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 each person, boom, out. That's their manak. Another person, he has a suit store, makes suits. Every single, let's say, sukkot, boom, they come. Every family member, free suit. The other one, <coughs> oh, yeah, you have to be a kolel member, yes. You understand? The council membership, your membership is 18,000, really. Yeah? Okay. Right? So what happens? Yeah, that includes the babysitting and everything else. Yeah? Huh? Without the genizad. With the genizad, it's 26. Yeah, you'd give up. Yeah, okay. So what happens is, yeah. So what happens is, is that a person, right? He has to actually just understand, right, what's going on. You understand why? Because at the end of the day, right, each one would go accordingly. So if he went and he wanted to give him a suit, he can't come and I'll use the money for something. So therefore, if he gives him for the haluk, you can't use it for something else. Why? Because I gave it to you for a certain reason. So says the given Maybe it's different over there. They are to the that they're going to start suspecting him that what's going on, right? Like, what's going on? I, I come and I give you money to buy a talit, and you're buying a clothing, I'm giving it for clothing, you're buying what's going on, right? Go, I'm going to buy this haluk uh, for the and he didn't actually give it to him. So, what's going on, right? He didn't buy it for him. Imagine, I give the guy money, I tell him, go buy for yourself a, a suit, he doesn't buy a suit, he buys uh, shoes. The guy comes with the same uh, broken suit. I'm going to come and say, I don't understand. I told John Paul to give him a suit. What's going on? So I'm going to suspect him falsely of Bennett not giving him the money. Inami, for another reason. Yeah. He comes and he says, right? He says, people are going to say that I'm going to buy for him a talit and he didn't buy it. Meaning, right? Think about it. David comes and he says, I'm going to buy him a, a thing. He never bought it for him. I'm going to think, I don't understand, why is he not a word of a man of his words? Understood? Okay? So in Ken, so literally, so what do we learn? Because of Chashad. Right? My, what was that? It's because he's being Meshaneh the Da'at, 
that call him Avir al Dad, but Abayi di Kagazlan. Anybody that's going to be Avir al Abayi, he's called a Gazlan. So that's what we're actually coming. We're saying that the person is going to be called a uh, Gazlan if he changes from the Balabai, and that's the Shita of Rabbi. So right now, if I lend you for one thing, I cannot come and change it to something else. Okay, fine. Two dots. As zocheret achamor ivrika, and it becomes uh, a little bit blind. Again, not blind completely, but a little bit. So he says, "My ivrika." What do you mean ivrika? Right? Did you realize that what's the shortest of the word? Barak. What is barak? Lightning. Right. So let's see. Hacha targimu nehorita. So here they say that it means right yishutain, which means it causes a uh, blindness. Right. But avamar lavzeket. We're talking about uh, tolaim that it comes that there's like tolaim that come in its in its legs. So there are two different explanations what it is exactly. Okay. How the Amar lehu? So there was somebody that came and he said, "Avzaka b'minta the Malka." Right. I saw. What is this? Asim agurim mikavon b'gide meshi shelamelus. Meaning, he's saying that I found these things which are like a tolat. So I found these like worms that are in the clothing. Right. Even nowadays, there's there's a there's I forgot which type of there's like type of like a worm that goes in clothing, and the way to get out of it is you put it into into the freezer. You know what I'm talking about or not? So he says over here, So he went and he saw these bugs with these bugs, which are clothed bugs or whatever that are in the clothing of the king. He said, What type of clothing? Were they made out of kesef or zahav? So he said, They went and they said, Right? And, and which means, And therefore they killed him. Right? Why? Because they understood that he was lying. Because they don't go in uh, clothing which are made out of uh, linen. Some people say, and they left him. Right? So it means it depends, but they said they understood that he was actually talking the truth. Okay? Next. He said that it was going to be taken by the king. Meaning that what happens right now, the king comes and he takes uh, the donkey. So you have to put a replacement. You could just say, listen, <laughs> go get it from the king. That's only if it's going to be which means if he could come, if it was actually given and he's going to give it back to him and you could still use it. So you could say, listen, it's yours for now. And if he took it, it's your mazal. You rented it out. If right now in the middle of your rental, the king took it for a week, that's your problem. But if it's going to be that it's not going to come back until after the, the sechirut, so then no, then you have to actually give him another hamot. Okay? Ushmul Amar and Shmuel says, if it was on the way of getting it, you could tell him, if it's not on the derech to get it, you have to come and you have to get him another hamur. Okay, so it all depends on how it was. Next, Meitve. So they're going to ask the following question. You're going to get the hamur. And then it became a little bit uh, blind. Right, or nishtateta, which means that it became a little bit crazy. That you know, that it, uh, but it's still you could still put a, a donkey over it, yeah. So he comes and he says, "Yeah, I can't see Baba Haki. It only says one. Yeah, he says over here, zero. It's ah, zero. zero, zero, zero. Okay, so zero, zero Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit." So now says the Gimara, Meitve. So they're going to ask the following question. So here it is. Meta v'dai is or shenas aringaria, or it's going to be taken by the king. He's obligated to give him back a chamor. Bishma l'rav lokai. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a chamor. Maybe he's going to give him back a the chitim, and if you're going to answer according to Shmuel, it's also not a question. It all depends whether he was going to the Hamor Tavodat Amelech, and therefore you can't get another one or not. He says, It says in the Seifa. What does it say in the Seifa? He says in the Seifa, it says, it says Rashbag, right? Rabbi Shimon and Lazar, I'm sorry. And if not, it says in the Seifa, 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 so I'm going to ask you, and Shmuel is going to answer you. Love me, Rabbi Shimon Lazar the Kalkavati. I have Rabbi Shimon Lazar. He goes like me. I'm the Amri, so I hold like Rabbi Shimon Lazar. Which means that if it's going to be b'derech halichata, you could say Arishel shel chalafanecha. So he bites him, or if you want, you could also answer. Kula the entire things of Rabbi Shimon Lazar. 
The Chasur Mech Sarav Achitani, but it's lacking part of the Gemara. Hasocher et hachamor vivrika od nishtatet. If you're going to get a hamor and then it becomes blind or becomes crazy, Omelo Yusei Areshel Chalafanecha, or Shana Asita Gnaria, or you're going to make, if it's going to be taken by the king, you're going to have to be obligated to give another hamor. Bamed, when one of these words, Shalab Derech Anich Hatan Echla, Valitla Bederech Yerda, if it was going to be taken on the way there, Omed, you could tell him Areshel Chalafanecha, Divre Rebi Shimom El Lazar, Shaya Rebi Shimom El Lazar Omed, in Bederech Anich Hatan Nitla, Omelo Areshel Chalafanecha, Vimlav, Right, Chayav Lamilo Hamor Acher, you have to give him another hamor.